Tāla for lover, kia ora and greetings from Aotearoa, New Zealand. I am Sonia and I'm a primary school teacher from Auckland, New Zealand. I'm an e-learning lead teacher and today's session is about my travel experience I had when I made face-to-face -face connections with educators in the environment. I recently returned from an amazing journey. The New Zealand government awarded me a New Zealand teacher sabbatical TeachNZ award that helped me visit educators around the world and this is my journey. When I arrived back in Auckland, I shared my journey at the Reform Symposium Online Global Conference 2013, which is an online conference where presenters are selected by invite only, and I was one of 100 global educators selected. These are the projects, places and educators I visited, and because of time, I will be speaking briefly on each one. I'll continue to add to my blog as I finalise the rest of my information. The first place I stopped at on my journey was Hawaii, where I attended the Flat Classroom Conference with Julie Lindsay and Vicky Davies. The Flat Classroom Project was hosted by Punahou School, where Barack Obama attended. We had 40 teachers, 200 students representing nine countries, all working together in teams. The top right group was the team I was placed into. Before the conference, I'd never met any of these educators, even in an online situation. We called ourselves heart to heart and face to face. From the four, you will meet Ryan again, and I, I talk with Anita on Twitter, with Hui Mei and Brian on Google Plus. We created a globalization project that together we had to come up with. Pitch to the students who attended alongside their teachers, and the students gave us feedback. We then had to create a video upload it to the cloud and embed it back to a shared wiki. The winning teams had their projects shared on the final day and we were the teacher's winning team. We learned from experience about collaboration, making connections and creating. My next stop was Denmark, where through New Market School Connections, I was able to visit the new school in Billands near Legoland. The school was into its second day when I arrived and everyone was kind enough to let me visit and see a brand new environment. Lene was the Danish part of the team to ensure that the children learned Danish as well as English. She was also acting head teacher. On their site, you will find that they follow the international baccalaureate program framed by the Danish learning traditions and with the values of creativity from the Lego group. These values are collaboration, problem solving, and learning through play, which are embedded in their learning philosophy, philosophy, but they stress they are not a Lego school. While in Denmark, I met up with Lene, who is a school designer, and she shared with me her work with Hellerup School, among several of the leading Danish schools that she has worked with in school design. Lene has even shared some of her knowledge with our school as we are currently undergoing a build. My next stop on my journey was Finland, where through following and having met Pazi Solberg, I was determined to visit. I observed who Pazi spoke with on Twitter and I made connections with Timo, who agreed to look after me for the day if I made the three hour train journey north to Yvaskula. Unknown to me, I later found out that Yvaskula is the centre of Finnish education. My first sightseeing day there was a wet day, so I visited the local library and met the director of libraries for the region. Her name was Seya Leitman Kushmash, who informed me that there were 14 branches of library in the area with three mobile library units. The libraries in the region service 80% of residents. Each resident took out an average of 18 books a year and visited their local library 10 times. She also explained that their website was visited 20 times per annum per head of population. From the data gathered, people who use library internet service also had internet at home. People who did not have internet at home did not necessarily visit the library, and the library experienced 2,000 visits per day. <coughs> Timo took me to visit his son's elementary school, and what I noticed the most was how independent the children were. They all rode, rode walked, or bus to school generally unsupervised. I was also able to meet Aki Pustinen, a secondary school principal of Marame Senior High, 
and what I noticed about his school was the learning spaces for teacher. They all shared the same space. For example, all desks for teachers were in the same room. Aki shared how all teachers' learning is transparent. There was a round room for discussion. In addition, I learned about the way they were using technology in a one-to-one -one way. They were focused on student leadership and taking ownership of learning for both teachers and students. Aki highlighted entrepreneurship at his school and also the environment. Afterwards, I spent some time with Timo at his school and my learning there was Wilma, the Finnish student management system the schools use in the region for homeschool communication and other interesting learning. I also found out how much our European colleagues use Facebook to communicate with each other in the same way that we use Twitter. I stopped in Austria for a rest and then carried on. My next stop was visiting Bede in Switzerland. Bede is a researcher behind the Goldau project. I met Bede through my new media consortium membership. This is the site that researches and publishes future forecast trends in education. Bede and I spent time sharing their journey. Beat organised for his assistant Rosemary to take me to visit the schools involved in the Goldau project. I was interested in how they child iPhones with a class of 10 year old students. The students were allowed to use the phones and internet services at no charge and to take home their smartphones after school. In this project, the students had any time and anywhere access to an internet connecting, connected computing device which can be used for reading, writing, calculating, drawing and taking photos, listening, recording audio and communicating. Pupils created their own rules for cell phones and they created their usage system. The adults involved have carried on with this idea of pupils creating their own rules. The next day I travelled by train for over two hours to meet Rosemary, Rosemary who took me to visit the training centre for teachers. We then drove and visited the schools involved in the project. I met Christoph, who was trying innovative seating arrangements to see the effects. Christoph's class also have one-to-one -one devices. In the afternoon, I was taken to meet Nadia, a young teacher taking over an experienced one-to-one -one class. The children came in, com the children came in comfortable with the technology and I was fascinated to observe how the tool was part of the learning. Then I met Christian Nerf, who was the teacher in the original Goldau iPhone project, and he shared his learning journey with me. We spoke about learning, teacher professional learning, and how to shift attitude. He is currently principal of Art Goldau. He asked me many questions about our system, so I put him in contact with our principal to further the discussion. He used Google Translate to talk. One important theme coming through both Beat and Christian is with the project in schools is who is studying the teacher. I was so excited when I visited Delhi through Chu from RS Con, I was able to meet Sunita, I was able to get Sunita's attention on Facebook. Sunita is the person behind Granny Cloud, the Granny Cloud project. Sunita said that she would put me in contact with someone in Delhi who might be able to help me visit the Hole in the Wall project. By Google, I got a hold of Dr. Rita Dunwell, who not only said she would help, but said she would take me if I had a car. Fortunately, I had access to a car and a driver, so I picked Rita up and together we visited one of the first cells from the Hole in the Wall project. After a short while, I watched the, for a short while, I watched the children come up and use the computers. Not only did I visit, but I was able to meet three of the original children who stood on the bricks to reach the keyboard. One is now a shop owner. Rabina is now a second year teacher in training and is aiming to be a computer teacher. And Janama, who is training to be a lawyer. The three young people enthusiastically shared how the project changed their lives and their thinking. A young fellow came up and used the computer and I found out that he comes every morning to talk to his grandfather in a different city. His grandfather also visits the cell to talk with his grandson. In the afternoon, Rita and I travelled across Delhi to the slideshare headquarters. 
I'd arranged to meet Amit Ranjan, one of the founders of SlideShare. SlideShare had just been bought out by LinkedIn. It has been recently rated in the top 10 social media tools. I looked for Amit on Twitter and I was able to contact him via LinkedIn. It was interesting to visit the office and see how similar it is to what I know of Google. Amit and Diksha, his assistant, spent time with Rishwa and myself and shared their beginnings and their journeys. They asked me several questions on how I use SlideShare and I shared with them my Teach Me New Zealand project that happens each term in New Zealand. I shared how I encourage the use of SlideShare to help teachers share their learning. Amit was interested in hearing about the work that Ritu does as part of the whole of War project. From India, I travelled on to China to meet Song Zhao. Zhao worked at New Market School last year as a Mandarin language assistant through the Confucius program at Auckland University. We are involved with the Mandarin language program because we are future-proofing our students. We know that Mandarin is an important language. I was able to meet to visit Jia Tong University and meet one of her professors, Professor Lee. Zhao showed me around her university and the dorm where she lives as a student. It was great to visit the university that I had heard so much about. New Market School have had three Mandarin language assistants for our school and Zhao was particularly important to me because I was her host mother last year during her stay in New Zealand. At the dorm, I was able to connect again with Zhao's friends who visited her while she was living with me and it was a great experience to meet our Mandarin language assistant in her homeland. Part of the reason that I chose to visit India, China, Japan and Korea was that at Newmarket School we have over 76 of our children with connection to these countries. Zhao took me on a rush hour on a train. We visited Shanghai Central City during a busy time. I stayed in an apartment block with her for the week I was there and so I was able to experience life as my children would have experienced. She fed me typical Chinese meals and then some, as she wanted me to experience everything. She took me to visit Xitong ancient city so that I could see China as it used to be with traditional skills still being used for daily living. I was immersed in language, food and culture for the week I was there. Zhao organized for me to visit with Mung Mung and her husband. Mung Mung was our Mandarin language assistant the previous year. Had such a great time. I was interested to see the apartment living this gave me an appreciation of why our families choose apartments in New Zealand because in China, blocks or apartments are like communities. Each block has a central community area and each block has east to transportation system and shop. Each block is self-contained and has a feeling of security and safety. My friend Hannah joined me in Japan. Hannah and I are both e-fellows from 2011. Together we went and visited Aiko's nursery school. Aiko was a Japanese language assistant that I hosted from a previous school. The ages of the children in her nursery school are from babies until seven years old. What struck me was the way shoes are stored. It was nice to visit a local school and hear the children speaking and learning in Japanese. Hana is an early childhood teacher with an interest in babies learning and she particularly enjoyed this visit. The children sang for us and some of them practiced some basic English greetings because they learn English for about an hour a week. After our visit, I could organize for us to have a tour guide and one of her friends picked us up and took us around Osaka where we visited an old Japanese village. We experienced a Japanese lunch and then she took us to her house in the outskirts where we were able to see rice being harvested. The following day, Hannah and I travelled across by train to Kansai where we met Ryan at his school, Kansai University Elementary School. We were privileged to meet its principal, Mr Tanaka. Ryan, I met via the flat classroom project in Hawaii. I noticed again that teachers did not have their own personal spaces. The teachers shared a workspace and again this was a teacher space seen throughout Europe and Asia. 
This school had a student leadership program and it was interesting to see the children serving lunch just like it said in the Jazz School Journal, Lunch in a Japanese School. The children broadcasted school messages daily across the television system. Again, we were interested in the space that had been set aside for the shoes. Then children had inside and outside shoes. <coughs> Ryan showed me around their school and in his school the children learned in Japanese. They had cows and a Wi-Fi system that was beginning to be used for learning. From Japan, I flew to Korea and stayed with Hana in Bundangs. So, I attended a Google Apps boot camp and learned about the Google certification courses for teachers. Hana joined me for the Google Summit that was held in Seoul International School. We met up with Nick, who is one of our Twitter buddies. We were part of an international mix of educators who had flown in from different parts of Asia, USA, for the summit. I am now committed to gaining my Google Apps for Educators certificate. While in Korea, I took the opportunity to visit Hana in her nursery school and observe her working with her babies. I was able to spend time at Eaton House in Korea and meet the families. Hana showed me photos of her classroom before she took it over and added her touch. She's influenced by the work of Emilia Reggio and this is highlighted in the way she works with the children. Again, I was interested in the shoe space and the space for teachers to work together. In the afternoon, I visited Ben who showed me around his school, Korea International School. His school has a one-to-one -one program for grade 5 and 6 children like our late primary school. We watched what they were doing. I saw the fishbowl class where the teachers and children students came to learn. Learning is always transparent. The children are also learning Mandarin. Ben spoke about his vision for the school and how they are using Google Apps in a collaborative way. Teachers were encouraged to learn the tool and be creative with the tool. He also stressed that teachers needed to be able to create technically what they ask students to create. For example, if teachers ask students to create a video and upload it to a blog, then this was something that they should be able to do too. In Ben's school, there was a feeling of systems. The central management system was strongly supported by key people. The teachers and students were supported by a hidden and seen infrastructure. For example, the Wi-Fi and technical people were visible part of the system. There was a place for teachers and students to come, and support, to come for support with their learning inquiries. In this school there was a feeling of no walls even though there was some space with walls. Teachers had been inventive and had removed the physicalness of the walls. From Korea I returned home for a few days before heading down to Yulun with Rubina and Natasha. Both Rubina and I had our presentations accepted. I supported Rubina with her inquiry while I was away and the three of us met regularly on Google Plus Hangouts to discuss and plan her presentation. Myself, I presented my work on Teach Me Z, which is a national project that I won each term and have teachers from around New Zealand share their learning. This is part of my inquiry into pedagogy and how I work collaboratively with educators from all around New Zealand. During our session, we had approximately 20 educators face to face, but virtually we had over 80 real time views over the live stream. This time, I had a definite shift in thinking as I encouraged the teachers to reflect on the process of presenting this way and to write a blog post. In addition, teachers received a digital plaque for their portfolio as evidence of sharing. The highlight for me at ULEARN was meeting Mark Pesce, who was who influenced me greatly as an e-learning educator with this topic of hyperconnectivity. This is about focusing on the space between the nodes or about focusing on relationship. For example, this is what all this presentation has been about. My second highlight was attending ULEARN with other educators from Newmarket School. I take this quick chance to say thank you to the Board of Trustees for supporting us. It's the first school I've been at where I have not had to find my own way and registration at New Learn. So thanks, New Market. 
I applied for and won a New Zealand Ministry of Education Teach and Z sabbatical which paid my salary. The overseas journey I paid for by myself. My communication devices were provided by my school and there's no way I could have survived without them. The journey allowed me to see how important it is for our children to learn how to use tools. <clears throat> I pre-planned my contacts using my connections on Twitter and Facebook. I kept a journal or burger and ins used Instagram and video for images and video. I also microblogged on Twitter. My biggest challenges were exhaustion and my personal safety. But would I do it again? Of course. So to my colleagues, I would say if an opportunity like this comes, just do it. The exhaustion and personal safety provided me an opportunity to get out of my comfort zone. Huge thank you to all the educators who took me into their domains and were willing to share. And I can't do anything innovative without the technology and the thinking. I've been right around the world and at Newmarket. We are doing pretty good by world standard. I appreciate the tools I've been provided, the PDM given and the environment I work in. Our teachers are open to working together and our children are provided with creating tools, a strong Wi-Fi system and teachers who are learning about pedagogy. Huge thank you to the educators who took me into their domain who were willing to share. Massive thanks to Wendy Coford who encouraged me to have a go and applying for the sabbatical and who supported me on my journey by keeping up with me via the technology. What I learned is you can't do anything without the technology and the thinking. I went come all the way back. My school is an amazing school. We are well on our journey. Thank you everyone for your time.